everybody. Welcome back to another episode of JSTAN Studios Painting. So this was originally supposed to be a live stream painting, but uh, actually this was the night where YouTube's content delivery network apparently went down for a little while. So it looked like the website was working, but you couldn't actually access any of the videos. So that makes for a pretty lame live stream when you can't actually watch it. So I figured I'd record just a, a static video and then I'd post it to the Facebook page and to the YouTube channel. So thanks for joining me. Uh, so last time, I'm kind of finishing up one of the commission pieces that we were doing before. So last time, this is what we got to. And the reason that the, uh, that the customer was looking for this painting was that they had recently gotten rid of their, their landline phone. So they now had the phone jack in the wall and they were like, what if you could paint something and you know create a little landscape that would just kind of go over the top of that and conceal that phone jack? I thought that was a really cool idea. And what they requested was something that had a lot of blue and brown and green tones in it, something that was maybe, uh, it was a natural scene that kind of had those colors, it kind of went with the color scheme of the room. So this is kind of what I was cooking up a little bit. So something that was deep in the woods, something where you were, you know, looking at out into the tree line, uh, the little river stream creek thing that kind of came crashing down through the middle. And I knew that this is going into like a dining room sort of an area. And it was kind of going, like I said, to cover up that spot where there was uh, the phone jack. So it wasn't something that was going to be like necessarily the focal point of the room. So I just figured I'd do some, just a really nice scene that's kind of, I don't know, homey feeling, I guess, uh, out in the woods. So let's uh, continue on with that. So I actually, uh, I work remotely, so I work from home. And I worked in the same room where this easel was set up, and I've been looking at this for the past week or so and thinking, what can I do with this? What, can I, what, what do I like? What do I don't like? And what I want to do is I want to add in another plane into this. Uh, to me, this painting looks like it's going to be a little bit uh, more two-dimensional than I want it to. It doesn't quite have the depth, of, the depth feeling that I want to get out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an extra plane. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a color that's a little bit darker than this gray color that we see in the background here, and I'm going to put in basically another tree line. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it the feeling like there's there's more layers that we're seeing. We're not just seeing trees way in the back, we're seeing trees way in the back, kind of in the midground, and then again coming closer to us in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, a dark brown here, and I'll kind of try to get up close here. Oh, by the way, uh, this is a new webcam setup. I know that there were some problems before where the webcam would kind of cut in and out, and I'm hoping that this new one resolves some of those issues. So it's probably going to look a little different, not only because it's a different webcam, but also because I'm recording rather than live streaming. So I can get a little bit higher quality out of it that way. But if things do look different, uh, if I sound different, uh, it's because the mic setup is being, uh, it's been changed a little bit. The camera's been changed a little bit as well. So that's the reason for that. And um, we'll see how good the autofocus is on this new camera. So uh, I'm going to go into a little bit of dark brown. This is raw umber, and it's uh, it's a heavy body paint. So it's it's quite thick. And these are all acrylics that I'm working with. So quite thick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a little bit of gray as well. So kind of uh, similar color to what we have up there, but uh, darker so that it stands out from that back tree line there. And I've got a big filbert brush here. And what that's going to enable me to do is get a couple of tree-like shapes. I'm not really looking for something that's too uh, too specific because these are still trees that are quite far back. Uh, I just want to drop in these uh, general general shapes of trees. And again, I don't want to be too particular about uh, the way that this is coming out. I'm going to add a little bit more brown just because I want it to come out a little bit darker than it is right now. I'm just going to make in, drop in those little tree shapes. I'm not as concerned about getting over the black at this point. Um, and the reason for that is the black is, you know, it's, it's a very powerful color. It's going to kind of overwhelm the brown that goes up there. And uh, more to the point, I'm going to be painting over that black anyway. So it's not as big of a concern for me. I think I'm going to have 
have to add a little bit of water to this to thin it out. I probably didn't need the, uh, the heavy body paint, but that was what was on my canvas, at the or on, on my palette, excuse me, at the time. So I'm going to add in a little, bit a little bit of water to hopefully thin this out. That's working a little bit better. And you, you notice that I'm just kind of dabbing the canvas with this and not really, you know, trying to control this super well or anything like that. And again, the reason for that is just, I'm just trying to kind of get in some rough shapes that look like they're, they're far away. And I want this to fade out towards the bottom, so I'm letting, uh, letting that kind of happen as I go. I'm not reloading with paint as I get closer and closer to the bottom where I want the paint is up closer to the top, so that these look like they have uh, some, some shape and some body up there. But towards the bottom, not as big of a concern. Ordinarily, I would have liked to have done this um, when I was first laying in the background pieces, but this works just as well. I'm gonna go into a little bit more of just the pure gray I'm going to kind of lighten up the bottom a little bit. That might be a little bit too much. So I'll just take a little bit of that off with my finger. And I'll also take a little bit and I'll pull it up into the darker section. And that'll kind of serve to, uh, to lighten things a little bit. And the reason that I'm doing that is purely just because I want it to kind of go into the background, look like maybe there's a little bit of mist in the background there. All right. So now that we've got that done, now what? So I want to suggest that these trees are a little bit closer and that they have a little bit of color to them. So I don't want to do a ton of color at this point because they are still very far away and they're not very detailed. So I'm just going to probably come in here, grab a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. So these are both very thin paints. You can see them running down even just as I've been holding it like this. So you can see that that's, that's a pretty, I uh, hope that the lighting isn't messing up uh, how you're seeing that, but that's a pretty light color there. And I'm going to uh, take most of the paint out of the brush, honestly. I don't really want a whole lot of paint. I'm not trying to really get this any bright. And I'll just kind of dab in that color. I don't know how well, like I said, the uh, lighting is making it to pick this up via the camera, but uh, there's a nice little little bit of color at the top there. And I just want it at the tops of those trees. That's a little bit too much. Pull a little bit off of my finger. Just put in a little bit of color there. And that color again, it's going to serve to kind of uh, give some visual information to the eye. Uh, it will help people recognize that, hey, those are trees back there. We got a little bit of green blotchiness that kind of looks like leaves and bushes and trees and stuff like that. All right. And then I think one other thing that we can do, uh, I'm going to take this filbert brush and wash it off because I think well, it served its purpose at this point. I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to go into some of this uh, darker brown color. Not a lot. Just going to get it on the edge of the knife there. And I'm going to uh, kind of cut in just a little couple of little uh, things that look like maybe tree trunks or sticks, bushes, little plants, those kinds of things. Because they're far away, but you're still going to see some of them. And again, I think it just adds a little bit of uh, visual interest when you're, you're I can sort of detect some of those little things. And who knows, at some point I might come in with the brush and actually kind of refine some of those. I do intend for the video to probably be about 30 minutes, just to kind of be respectful of people's time and everything. It's a little bit different doing this without it being a live stream, you know, without the possibility of there being any questions that would come in or anything. So feel free, I'm always uh, game to answer questions if you want to ask one on the Facebook page or over on Instagram or whatever. Okay, so the next step, um, I think what we're going to do is add some coloration into these trees that are a little bit closer to us. 
and these are going to be pretty bold at this point. I think the coloration is going to be pretty, pretty um, definitely visible at this point because we're so close to the viewer. So I'm actually going to swap out brushes, and uh, this is just a little angled brush. So I don't know how well the autofocus is catching that, but uh, it's just a straight. These are pretty stiff bristles, you can tell, uh, as I'm kind of bending it against the palette. They don't really flex that much, and that's kind of what I want to give these trees the proper effect. And what I'll do is I, I, I have a habit of just using the same brush and going from light to dark, honestly, and just kind of letting all of my colors meld together without washing the brush too often. Uh, and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start off with the evergreen trees, because those are going to be very green, uh, yellow, and they're going to be bright and colorful. So I want to go into this yellow for starters. Again, this is the slightly more liquidy yellow, along with this more liquidy green. And I'll just mix up um, sort of a yellowish green color. I want it more towards the yellow end rather than the green, because I have it going on to a black sort of skeleton, if you will, of the tree. So acrylic paints, by nature, are pretty transparent. So if I make this super dark green and I put it on a black tree, it's just going to get lost. It's not going to look right. Basically, just look black with maybe a little couple of splotches on it. So I want this to be a little bit more powerful of a color, which is why I'm using quite a bit of yellow in this. I'm going to go in. And I'm going to dab it onto the tree. And I'm, here I'm making a little bit of a decision about where the light's coming from. For some reason, I have a tendency to paint as if the light is coming from the right-hand side. Um, at this point, I, I kind of have a little bit of freedom because the sky is bluish, but there's no clear sun in the sky at this point. So the sun is either somewhere up over the top of us, or maybe it's behind, or it can really be wherever we want as long as it's not actually in the painting. So as long as I'm consistent throughout the painting, we're fine, and visually it's going to look uh, look okay. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of dab in this color, and I'm keeping it on the right side so that everything is consistent. And I think one of the key things with painting trees is that you just kind of let the colors move around and you let the brush do a lot of the work. The bristles of the brush are going to give you that appearance of leaves and foliage far better than you ever could. I think when I was starting off, what I would try to do is like micromanage everything. And I would just try to paint like every single leaf. And you just can't do that. It's not going to look right if you do that because it's nature is well natural. So if you're trying to micromanage and try to force everything, I mean there's something to be said for like hyper-realism, but that's really tough when it comes to natural stuff. I find that it's a lot better just to kind of let the bristles do their jobs and then form a lot of little individual pieces of foliage or leaves or things like that. Something that I did there that I didn't mention is I went into a little bit more green for the opposite side of the tree. So I still want it to be pretty much the same color, but I want it to be a little bit more, a little bit less of a highlight, a little bit darker. So I'm going to do just some little skits and scratches in the uh, in the center of the tree here, not really following any specific methodology, just trying to make it sort of look like tree branches that are uh, poking out all hither and beyond. Um, good. And I think with that we can move on to one of the other trees and follow the same methodology. And, and as long as we're doing something that's a little bit uh, more on the repetitive side, I guess I can take a moment just to kind of plug my own stuff here. If you guys wouldn't mind hopping over to the Facebook page or Instagram and give them that a like, uh, JSTAN Studios in both spots. I post some landscape paintings, but I've also been doing uh, quite a bit in more like, I don't know, comic book style. Uh, I've been doing a couple of different sort of wild animals. Posted uh, Prairie Dog at one point. Just all kinds of different art things. I mean, I, I really regard myself as kind of a student of art. In a lot of so yeah, there I do a lot of uh, 
comic book style art things. They're doing some wildlife drawings. I really do kind of a variety, and I, I do kind of consider myself sort of a student of art in general, trying to uh, learn it and kind of master it in different ways. My latest project that I've really been devoting a lot of time to is something called Champions of Breakfast. It's a comic book that I've been uh, doing over the past couple months now. So I'm just in the process of finishing up issue number two. So that should be getting done uh, very soon. And that is a project that I'm very, very proud of. I really, uh, I really think that issue two is a big step forward in a lot of ways. It's a step forward in terms of the artwork. It's a step forward in terms of the storytelling. I'm really, really proud of it. So uh, be sure that you're liking either Instagram or Facebook or both or beyond both of those. So uh, that'll be coming out probably, I'm hoping to start posting that at some point, maybe next week, if not definitely a week after. And then looking ahead towards the future in terms of artistic projects that I uh, will be working on, I want to finish issue three of Champions of Breakfast because that's going to conclude um, sort of that story arc that we're working on. So if you guys have been, uh, haven't been watching or reading, so the Champions of Breakfast, who are Hotlink, McTavish, Long John the Naval Glazed, and Kung Shroom, they've been uh, investigating jewel smuggling in the town of, in the town of New Lard Town. So this kind of uh, issue two is sort of the, the climax, sort of where they're starting to reach all of the uh, revelations and the problems and everything. And issue three is going to be uh, the final confrontations, the uh, big showdown and everything. So that will kind of put everything aright and tie up uh, some of the plot points. And then, of course, I have time on doing multiple stories of Champions of Breakfast. This is just the first story arc that I have in mind that I wanted to do. Uh, I also intend to get a book put together, an actual sort of hardcover thing of these first three stories, all as one. And I think that'll be about 68 pages when all is said and done, those three. So it'll be a pretty decent size, pretty decent size work. And then after I'm completed with that, something that I've been kind of hatching up in the back of my mind is actually writing a novel, something that I've never done before. So uh, this is being recorded in November of 2020. So it's National Novel Writing Month. It's uh, something that uh, is very, it's been inspirational. But I realized at this point there are other projects that I have on my plate, uh, including having a five-month-old son, uh, which is kind of making that a little bit difficult. So I was sitting there thinking, oh, I probably wouldn't be able to do National Novel Writing Month. But uh, I've had an idea hatching for sort of a tech noir story. So sort of science fiction meets uh, film noir sort of fiction story of uh, a detective and sort of a sci-fi landscape thing. And uh, I really think that that's going to be cool. I'm really excited about writing that. It's the first time that I've ever really written a long story like that, so I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm fully expecting quite a bit of pain <laughs> in the process, but uh, I figured instead of doing a novel in a month, just because of the stuff that, you know, other things that are happening, other projects that are more on the front burner, I figured maybe I would try to do that in 80 days, so a little bit over two months, two and a half months. I think that that's probably a realistic goal. All right, so with that, we've got our three evergreen trees done. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do these uh, sort of deciduous trees that maybe have, have lost all of their leaves. So I'm going to wipe off some of this green and yellow paint. And like I said, I have a tendency to just kind of go straight into things and uh, work a little bit with a dirty brush. But I don't know, that's the way that I've always worked. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the dark. Uh, dark browns. This is a raw umber again. And this is a thick, heavy body paint. So basically, a little bit of the green color and a whole lot of this dark uh, raw umber that I have on the brush now. 
And I'm going to go in, and the light's coming from this way in this in this painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that dark color, and I'm going to kind of splotch it in along the back sides of the tree. And I'll kind of hack <laughs> at the trunk of the tree, for lack of a better term. And what I'm trying to do there is give the tree trunk a little bit of texture. So, you know, give it a little bit of a feeling of bark. And I will go in and grab some more of the dark color breath, and I will do the same on the tree opposite. This is a pretty subtle difference away from the black, so uh, you guys that are watching at home, you might not even be able to see anything that's happening right now. I can see a little bit of it, um, and we're, that's a good thing, because what I'm doing is I'm putting in shadows right now, so I don't want this to be super bright at this point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite side of it, so the highlight area is where the sunlight might be hitting it. And what I'm going to do for that is instead of using the dark raw umber, I'm going to use a paint called raw sienna, which is a little bit more uh, tannish in color. It's still brown, but it's it's more like a, like a darker clay sort of color. So I'll put a little bit of that down. I'm still using the dirty brush, so this is getting a little bit muddy as I'm moving it around, which is probably a good thing. I, I think that's good. That's a good color for a tree, sort of like an earthy, branchy, wooden thing. And here I've got some Indian yellow. And again, that's a thicker paint as well, a heavier body one, so I'll put that in there. And just kind of get uh, a yellowish, brownish sort of color. It's going to be sort of the base that will form the highlight color on these. And we'll see how that looks as we begin to put it down. And that, uh, that is what I want, so that's good. So then we'll just kind of put it along the highlight portions of the tree. I'll come down and grab some of these little root areas. Make sure they get both of these branches just like that. And I need a little bit more. And I'm going to go in and kind of hack with some of these highlights on the dark side. Not too much, because when you want, when you have highlights, you want to leave those dark areas so that they stand out. But I just want to put in a couple of them, because the dark side, even though it is the dark side, it's not going to be fully dark. There's going to be little ripples and pieces of bark that stick out further than others that catch the light. So I want to be sure that I put in a little bit of highlight. So that's good for the first tree. I'll go ahead and I'll do the same for the second tree. I do kind of figure this sort of hack and slash sort of approach when it comes to this, just because I find that it does uh, give the paint a little bit more texture and a little bit more character, which, especially if you're doing something like a tree, especially an old dead tree like these, you know, you want something that has a little bit of uh, flavor and character and sort of tooth to it, because these trees, you know, they've been around, they've seen some things. Need to give them a little bit of character. Can't really stand out and, and to look right. So those two trees are good. What I want to do as well, uh, I don't know if I have a liner brush. I do have a liner brush. This whole huge stack of brushes here, and I'm not even sure which ones I have. Um, what I'm going to do with this liner brush, and when I say liner, I just mean a little round brush. This one's pretty beat. You can tell that the Brush bristles are a little bit splayed out, but that's okay for this. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go in there and I'm going to add in a couple of little branches that kind of come off. To do that, I'm going to thin out a bit of paint. I'm going to go into both the dark brown and then that raw sienna that I mentioned. So we just get a sort of brownish tan dark color, and we grab a little bit more water to thin it out even more. So I want this paint to be quite thin. It's going to be making very small little details. And I'll just come off. Maybe a little bit more of the dark color here so that it stands out. And again, this might not be something that you can really pick up or see via the camera. It's, uh, it's there on the canvas. 
these are just little little branches, little twigs that are sticking off. And it just gives sort of the feeling of a tree that, you know, it had some limbs, the leaves have fallen off, it's, it's uh, maybe it's either dead or it's just, you know, it's closed up shop for the winter. So we have that. And maybe we put just one or two little indications on off of these branches over here. One more. Okay. Now, I think it's time, before I do that actually, one more tiny little detail. This is that big filbert brush from before, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. So we kind of produce that sort of grassy, leafy color again. I'm going to just tap at the base of these a little bit. I don't need a ton of paint here. I'm just trying to give the suggestion of a little bit of grass that's growing up and around uh, the base of these trees. Just to kind of smooth out the transition from ground to tree trunk. So that it's not a sharp division. So in actuality, there's all kinds of little grass and stuff that's growing around these things. And I can just use whatever's left, put in a couple little effects. I'll even do that actually around this little creek area. And the reason that I'm doing that is again just to kind of soften it up. So in nature you don't see a whole lot of sharp edges. And it's easy to get those in painting, so I find that that helps to make the painting look uh, far more natural. So beyond that, now what do we have to do? We're going to want to fill in this area, and I think what we're going to want to start with is the actual waterfall area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a fan brush. So this is a fan brush. It's got some pretty stiff bristles on it. So uh, I find that to be the best, honestly, for what I do at least. Um, I just, in general, tend to prefer that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a little bit of heavy body white acrylic paint. So this stuff is very thick and, uh, yeah, it's quite thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come in here and put in effects like, like you would see on a waterfall, basically. And I know that I skipped this in the previous one that I, previous live stream that I did. But uh, I'm going to put in sort of some little, little effects that go in back then back towards the horizon. And then now that we're at the actual point where the water would crash over, what we're going to want to do is start off going parallel to the ground and then pull down. Parallel and then pull down. And that's going to give us the look of water crashing over. I'm actually going to swap out now and get a little bit more liquidy white. So this is uh, a little bit thinner of a paint than what I was using before. And the reason that I'm switching over is I'm seeing how the canvas is reacting to that. And in order to get the effect that I want, like that, um, I need something that's a little bit thinner in order for it to actually look right. Like so I kind of give it a little pull downwards and bristles of the brush that are spread out like that kind of automatically give you this nice looking sort of uh, flowy appearance like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of rocks in the way as it's kind of going down so the, the um, this is going to kind of look like it skitters around a little bit as it's going down. So I'll make, again, I'll go flat and then I'll pull down. 
Oops, like that. Flatten and then pull down. Those two are kind of going to collide together. So maybe there are two little rocks that are kind of interfering with one another then. Come down there. And then we'll come down there. Just like that. We're going to want to make it churn a little bit in there. And then the water is going to go crashing down to the bottom of the waterfall. So that's going to happen here. And in order to do that, I'm going to keep it mostly flat, but then I'm going to pull up. Kind of pull up at an angle so it looks like splashing. Just like that. So that pulling up kind of gives it that sort of kinetic energy feel where it looks like this water has gone crashing down below. And now this water is going to be very turbulent and choppy, so I'm going to put in a whole bunch of um, water effects of just things that look like they're bubbling and frothing and sliding off in all sorts of directions. Awesome. So I'm pretty happy with the way that, that looks. And uh, I'm actually going to step out of frame for a moment so that I can grab some black paint. the challenges of having so many different tubes of paint that you don't know what to do with them. There we go. <laughs> Pardon me. And this black is what I'm going to use to put in those rocks that I have inside of that waterfall. Probably don't need very much, but that's okay. So I will grab, I can grab this brush. And basically we're just going to want a small brush so that we can put in a couple of basic rock shapes. There's not going to be a whole lot of uh, detail required here. So let's grab just a little bit of the black. Put in a rock here. And a lot of this is going to be covered up by the water that's crashing over them. But I do want this black to be pretty distinct inside of there, so I'm using quite a bit of paint. There we have it. And then, uh, just for giggles. We'll put one here down at the very bottom as well. It's kind of protruding up out of the water. And the way that I'm going to uh, make that effect kind of look more like a rock than it does right now, now it just kind of looks like a blob. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my gray color. And again, I still have some black color in this, so it's dulling out the color that I have. And I'm just going to apply that straight over the rock in the spots where I think there might be a highlight. And these are rocks, so I'm not getting too fussy on what they look like or what their shapes are, because rocks obviously come in all shapes and sizes as you go along. And then for the final touches on those, I'm going to go into some pure white. And again, I have some of the gray and some of the black on the brush now, so it's it's dulling out some of that white color. And I don't want it to be pure white on the highlights because that doesn't quite look right when we look at it on the canvas. It, it just looks too stark. So I'll just put some little white areas on it. Just like that, we have ourselves some rocks. Now I might even take uh, some more of this white paint and just get some a big old glob of pure white on the brush and kind of go around 
uh, these rocks just to kind of smooth out the transition and make it really look like this water is going up and over them. Because the water needs to be going around the rocks. The rocks can't be sitting floating on top of the water somehow. Just one of those points that uh, makes the painting look a little bit more more correct to the eye. All right. So now I think we can move into the foreground and then start to put the finishing touches on this thing. All right. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, brownish green area here. So this would be kind of like a, a little brook that it's coming over. So for that, I'm just going to use the same old brush, go into some of this raw sienna color, and I'll probably grab a little bit of black just to kind of darken it up a little bit. Make it a little bit more. And I'm not too concerned because this is a pretty dark color about where this goes. I just want to kind of get us uh, a dark base color under side I might uh, make a little bit more of a ridge at the top. And what I want to do is I want to leave some dark portions that are going to be in the shadow. Oh, that's a little bit bright. Uh, let me darken that down a little bit. So some dark portions that are in shadow and then uh, I want to bring forward some of the highlight portions that might be you know, uh, clefts in the rock or something that's protruding out towards you. And at this point, I'm going to try to take advantage of some of the thicker paints that I have. Because this is in the forefront, I want to give the, uh, the paint a little bit of texture. So there's a, something called impasto that you can do, basically where you can see the brush strokes inside of the paint. And you can really only do that with a thicker paint. So I am going to try to use some of this thicker black Kind of build up some areas of shadow that have a little bit more texture and that are kind of off the uh, off the canvas a little bit. It makes for a, a nice sort of effect. Gives it a little bit of three dimensionality to it, and as you're looking at it, I don't know, there's just something that looks looks good with it. And again, these are rock shapes, so I'm not trying to be super specific in how I lay these in or anything like that. Good. And now what I'm going to do is I'll probably take some more of this Indian yellow that I was using before, go into some of the raw sienna. So we get sort of a, a dark-ish, but still yellowish tan color. And I take a little bit of white as well to go in there. This is going to be my highlight color for these rocks. I have a whole bunch of paint on the brush right now, so I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. So mix that in. And this will kind of allow this to mix with the layer below. I'll try to mix in a little bit inside of these uh, dark areas as well, so that there's like an area where there's maybe a little outcropping or something that catches the sun. It's going to kind of be like a sandy sort of brook. Just laying these details with the highlights. And I kind of am going for sort of this marbled sort of appearance where I'm kind of pulling the brush back and forth like that. So I don't want it to look very, very organized. You know, that's, it's not how nature works in that sort of organized, straight way. So just having that extra bounce in the brush, I think, helps to kind of create that illusion of 
sort of a natural rock formation. Apologies for being left-handed here. I don't know if I'm uh, interfering with your view. Sorry about that if I am. Uh, especially as we get here a little closer to the extreme edge. All right. Well, at this point, I might want to put an extra little bit of highlighting in certain spots. I might go back and refine this with a little bit of extra areas of low lighting as well, where I can push things back into the shadows in certain spots. But uh, overall, I think we're doing pretty well with these spots. These areas of the canvas here are still pretty wet, so I'm able to move colors around a little bit, make determinations on the fly. If I don't like what I'm seeing as I'm going, I can kind of flip things around, maneuver color a little bit better than I could if it were dry. And I am liking the way that the gray looks a little bit better than the yellow, so I'll just go over this and kind of allow that gray to kind of overpower the yellow in spots. kind of creating sort of a dull, sandy, tannish, tannish brown sort of color, which I think is, is good. I think it looks appropriate for this. This scene of the cream. Cool. All right. So like I said, I might go back and kind of low light some of these areas, but I do want to kind of finish up here. I know that we've been going for, uh, for quite a while at this point. So to finish things off, what I want to do is define this water line a little bit where the rocky area ends and the water begins. And I want to put some, uh, some grassy areas up here. So that'll be uh, pretty much it, I think. We'll have a pretty well finished painting. So I'm going to grab that uh, angle brush that we used before, and I'm going to go into that Indian yellow color, so I'm sort of a dark orangish yellow. I'm going to grab some of this green, go into that. I'll even grab a little bit of the lighter yellow, and heck, maybe even a little bit of white. And I'll go up over the top here. And I need to separate this area from the plane behind it. So I'm going to kind of make sure that this color is much brighter than the one in the back. Because if it's not the uh, distinction of the plane, uh, it's not going to look right. It won't be distinct enough, and your eye won't be able to pick it up. So the viewers will kind of uh, it'll just be a little bit hazy in terms of what's happening. And uh, it's just a little bit less comfortable to look at. So again, I'm sort of using that dabbing technique. And I'll end up wiping a little bit of this so with my finger. One thing that uh, the person who commissioned this was asking for is that the uh, edges of the painting be covered as well, because they wanted to uh, hang it without a frame. So be sure to do that as well. Sorry for my back, but I'm going to go over here and do some this area as well. Just doing some of these touch ups so that the edges of the painting are covered. Okay. 
And uh, then just top and bottom will be the only things there. Now, in order to do that water line that I mentioned, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to use a technique to do it with a palette knife. And pardon me for stepping out of frame again. I need a little bit of extra white paint for this. So with that white paint, I'm going to want it to be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to use the, uh, I don't know, we call it cheaper, lower quality uh, white paint. And in the last video that we did, what I did is I pulled this, this brown color into the water a little bit. So it gave it kind of a hazy brown at the bottom. And the reason that I did that was that I wanted it to look like a reflection. So I'm going to come above where that hazy area of brown is, and I'm going to uh, cut in a little bit of water. And what I, the way that I'm doing that is I'm going straight down into the palette knife or straight down into the white paint with the palette knife. So I have a little bit out on the edge of the knife. I'm just going to uh, cut this in. I don't want it to be super duper thick of a line, but I do want it to be mostly parallel uh, with the floor. Because if you start doing things that are not quite so parallel with the floor, it starts to look like uh, things are crooked. Like you're in the Riddler's hideout in the 1966 Batman series, if you know what I'm talking about, where everything is shot at a little bit of an angle, kind of looks like you're going to spill out onto the floor. Right now I'm just picking up a little bit, especially because this area is uh, very sloshy. There's a lot of uh, turbulence in the water coming straight out of this, uh, out of the waterfall. Here I'm just scraping in a couple of little details with the palette knife. Again, I'm trying to keep it pretty well parallel with the floor. And this white is just kind of representing, ooh, that was a little bit thicker than I intended. <laughs> uh, just basically representing um, areas of turbulence, areas of foaming and frothing, all such as that. Be sure you get this water line along the edge as well. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Especially in the corner here, because that water needs to make a turn, I'm going to put in a little bit of splashing effect there. And the way that I'm doing that is just basically scraping off with the palette knife. Now I'll cut straight across again. We're down at the very bottom now. And just putting in some final last minute details and effects to make this look uh, like the brook should as the water comes over and crashes down. And with that, I think we're about good to wrap up. So what I'll be doing now from here on out is I'll do a little bit of refining. Uh, it will uh, just kind of tie everything together and blend it in a little bit more. I'll sign it and we will be good to go. So again, I'm sorry that uh, this live stream didn't happen quite as planned, but um, hey, it works. Find a way to overcome and adapt. So uh, until next time, this has been a JSTAN Studios video. I'm Jim. I thank you for joining me here. God bless.